Before we start machining any part, it's always a good idea to in inspect the part and analyse the part to make sure it is in a fit state for machining. Things we need to look out for are holes in the part, uh, which may be ejector pin holes for example, which need to be capped with a tangential surface so that when the tool is machining in the region of the hole it will run across where the hole was instead of diving down into the hole and potentially causing us problems with the machining. Other areas to look out for are upstanding areas that would typically be part of an insert. These inserted surfaces again need to be removed and capped and the surface capped so that again the, mark, the, the cutter can smoothly and quickly machine over that area without diving down or over the top of the insert surfaces. Finally uh, we always need to check to make sure that the part or the mould that we're machining has the sufficient draft angle. This is particularly important if for example we're machining a plastic injection mould which has a minimum draft angle requirement so that the part can easily be, easily be ejected from the mould without sticking. To do this we can visually check by switching on the draft angle shading and look, looking for any red areas which would indicate insignificant draft angle. So to begin with we need to take all the surfaces over into surface modeling and we're just analyzing what draft angle is required and checking the draft angle in various areas to see that it meets the minimum angle. So in this case obviously we have a zero draft angle on the side wall of this pocket which needs to be rectified. First thing we're going to do is delete the surrounding fillet at the top of this pocket because this fillet will obviously change position once the new draft surface has been created. The remaining surfaces of the pocket need to have their trimming removed because they will now be retrimmed back to a new position. Finally, the main intersecting surface of the mould needs to have the aperture removed where the pocket intersects the main surface, again because this will also be in a new position once the new draft surface has been created. So to make it easy to see we're going to flip the part over and we're going to recreate the new draft surface with the 5 degree angle. To do this we're going to select the fillet surface at the bottom of the pocket and draft down onto the main mould surface. There we can see the new fillet surface in blue. To finish off this pocket we need to recreate the fillet between the pocket and the main mould surface by simply selecting the surfaces So there we have the new finished pocket with the draft angle rectified to have a minimum of 5 degrees. So there we can see the red shading has now disappeared which is a good indication that everything is OK.
Here we, can, here we can see another region that is shaded in red when we switch on the undercut shading, again indicating that there is not enough draft angle on this uh, in this area. Again, the surface inspection tool indicates that there's actually zero draft in this area, which is obviously incorrect. Now this area is a lot more difficult than the, the first area because a lot more in surfaces surrounding this draft surface are going to be affected by the change in this draft surface. To do this manually would be an extensive process of untrimming surfaces, extending surfaces, reintersecting many surfaces with our new draft surface and then retrimming everything back together. We can do this a lot more quickly and automated by making use of the morphing command in the power mill modeling. In this example we're going to be using two curve morphing to reposition the, the, the draft surface. So first of all we're going to create the original curve from the draft surface in its original position. So to do that we're going to unset the trimming on the surface, extract the top edge as a wireframe curve like so. And then we need to make a copy of this curve and reposition this copy to the new position where the draft surface will finish. To do this we're going to use what we call variable offset command and we're going to offset the point at the center of the curve inwards by half a millimeter and then blend back to the original curve position at the ends. So here we have our two curves, our original curve okay, and our finish curve for the morphing. So we're going to select all the surfaces in the surrounding area that will be affected by this morphing command and we're going to use the two curve surface morphing, the reference curve being the original position of the draft surface and the control curve being the new position where we want the draft surface to finish. So now it's going to switch on the undercut shading so we can see it update once we apply the morph command. So there we can see after the morph in opera after the morphing operation the red shaded region has now disappeared. Finally we need to remove any of the upstanding areas which are not part of the main mold but are part of the insert and again remove and fill in any holes uh, that are for e the ejector pins. So this is simply a case of deleting surfaces that are not required and then selecting the boundaries for those holes that are remaining in, and then deleting those boundary curves to remove the hole from the surface, the holes from the surface. So now we have the part in a fit state for machining, we can go back into the main panel window and then machine as we wish. So now we are safe in the knowledge that when we machine this part we're not going to be machining any surfaces that do not have enough draft angle which could potentially scrap the part 
because we are machining more material off than we should if we do not have enough draft angle and when it comes to finish machining the main surface of the mould the fact that we have removed the the upstands from any inserts and filled in any holes from ejector pins means that the tool can now run a lot quicker and a lot smoother over those regions and obviously reduce the cycle time of the toolpath.